The Wednesday Week is sponsored by the Riverside Cafe, the perfect place for a pre-match pint. Gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to the Atty New Who podcast. I'm Lord Hillsborough, and with me online, first of all, we have Mr. Marriott. James, your boy, I'll let you for you. Is this, is this the way it's going to go tonight? Yeah, baby. Is this going to be it? Because you know what? Mm-hmm. He's, he's, had a, he's had a great couple of weeks, and he's done brilliant, but it's now getting ruined by some people. I'm not going to mention any names here, but some people, <clears throat> just taking it a little bit too far, uh, and ruining it for everyone. I think I, I thought I was quite reserved over the last few weeks, considering mm. what's happened. Mm. I, I've been sort of holding myself back. I, I, if, in fact, I think you'll find if you look at my Twitter feed for today, you won't see one at it new tweet all day from my Twitter feed. From your Twitter feed, yes. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't have got any from the uh, TWW cast feed because I've unfollowed it. Um, <laughs> so um, yeah, there we go. Oh, also on the line, we have uh, Mr. Davies, Richie O'Bean. I'll chuff you. Uh, I'm very well, well, Lord. Uh, yeah, I- I'm also um, getting a little, um, yeah, sick and tired of the the, uh, the attic posts pouring into our Facebook and Twitter feeds right now. You're not but, forced to look at them. You realise that? There's, I listen, don't send tags around with the gun your head. What, what, I'm an admin of the bloody page, Facebook page, so I get all the freaking notifications. Yeah, there's, there's been a few. Um, <laughs> Just one or two. <laughs> also on the line this evening, he's back. This is two weeks in a row. He's like, he's like Forestieri. Back from injury. <laughs> Eddie, oh boy, on the show for you. And then the righteous will shine forth <laughs> as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. And if children, heirs also, heirs of Atti and fellow heirs with Nuiu, if indeed we suffer with him so that we also may be glorified with him. I've become a convert to the church of Atti. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're on your own there, Eddie Orbean. I think there have no. been a, a, a few that have seen the lights just recently. We all have, though, we've all been converted, but... Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a bit, it is a bit like, let's, it's a bit like veganism, isn't it? When people become <laughs> vegans, and bloody hell, don't they have to go around telling everyone for a while? All right, yeah. so we've all converted to the Church of Atti. Great, he's a striker, he's scoring goals. Good. That's what he's paid to do. I right. think you'll find some of us have been here for quite some time. Um, right, then, let's get, so <laughs> let's crack on. First of all, we, know, we shall... Uh... We know, we know, we <laughs> know. Oh, shit. We shall speak about the the Preston game, shall we? Because I think it's fair to say that we weren't terribly confident about this one, were we? Mm, no. Um, no. I mean, they were in really good form. And we... I, our pattern was win one and then lose for two months, I think, was the way that this season's generally been going. So we'd, we'd done the winning bit. And I think, yeah, we all kind of <laughs> thought this is when... Um, you know, the wheels were going to come off again. Um, and to be honest, actually, pro- probably at half time, it, it was still sort of following that pattern because I think Preston had probably had the best of the first half. It wasn't a great first half of, first half of football. Um, and it did you know, kind of feel like we'd had a couple of chances, we're not taking them. Maybe we were going to kind of pay the price for that. But I mean, you know, I, so I, I didn't. I didn't see what was coming. I didn't see that start to the second half. Crikey, that was that was just phenomenal. Yeah, you know, it's. Uh, I I looked at the team that was put out in the first half, and I thought there was almost a stunning lack of ambition there. I thought it was it was a team that was coming off a decent result, um, albeit with an international break, uh, and I, I wanted it to be a little bit more adventurous, but. Preston are a pretty decent team and uh, so I can understand the logic behind it but as a first half it was it was just diabolical football wasn't it I wonder whether we're at this point in the season now where teams are mentally giving up you know we're almost on the beach for some of these teams who aren't going to make it um, 
oh yeah, as the song goes, they're not going down and they're not going up. It, it, does it make it easier for a team like Wednesday to take advantage of that because teams teams are not really fighting tooth and nail? It certainly felt like first half we weren't very good, but Preston didn't offer anything um, to, to really to really worry us and. Attacking towards the cop second half, we you know we decided to take the game by the scruff of the neck. You, yeah, you're, probably, it, you're probably right there. You, I think you're right in terms of the, the team selection wasn't inspiring, was it? It was like it, it felt like we decided to rest Zhao, and you're like, we've just had a, a two week international break. Yeah. You know why? Why do we need to do that? But then you also think, well, we're going into a period of you know two games in three days or whatever it, it was, two games in four days. Um, so you know maybe he feels there are certain players that can't play kind of the full sort of four separate halves of football there. So maybe resting Zhao for half of it and bringing him on for the second half and seeing whether he changes the game might just be like, you know, maybe actually Yoss is a tactical genius and he got it absolutely spot on. You know, we sort of rode out the first half and then second half went in for the kill and flipping well did it. I think we were missing sort of two strikers up front though, weren't we, in that first half? I think it was pretty I obvious. I, I, I've got this thing now about about before the game in, in a pub, like, please don't tell me the team, because it generally upsets me. But I think for the first time in a while, it didn't upset me, the team. But the first half, you're absolutely right, uh, Lord H, that, the, that we, we were crying out for... Atty was coming deep to get the ball, and Reach was coming deeper. And for me, Atty should should have been up front, and Reach, Reach should have been the one playing that number 10 role which is not really I don't think his position so it was crying out for two strikers all first half because it just wasn't working but fair play that, that, that he changed it at half time and, and made sure we had got two strikers up front and boy did that change the game <laughs> I, I, I think it was uh, we were almost hamstrung by uh, Hutchison Bingo becoming the most yeah. ludicrous the, <laughs> the worst Hutchison Bingo of all time about 38 seconds was it or something like that. it was less than he, that. it was about 24 seconds or something wasn't it he got booked while I was still singing the second verse of Hi Ho Sheffield Wednesday, which is <laughs> <laughs> uncommon even for him. Um, but, you know, what that did was uh, it, it almost made us sit even deeper and, and we didn't have any kind of link in the first half, um, you know, between, uh, you know, the back four and the, the more forward-looking players. Um, and I, I honestly thought that by having Bannon back, we would really, you know, we'd have that license to go forward. That didn't really happen in the first half, and I think it all changed when um, when Zhao came on. Obviously, Hutch's injury. I think at the time it looked horrendous. I mean, he cried out when he was uh, when he was cropped, and I swear that I heard a crack. Whether it, you know, at the time I didn't know the shin pad or bone or or you know anything else, but um, I feared the worst. He battled on, but Zhao coming on then I kind of gave us that athleticism, that ability to stretch the play that we just didn't have uh, in the first half. And it, it it really made a difference. Whether that is Yossi's tactical plan, I don't know. I, you know, I don't know how the game would have developed if uh, if Hutch hadn't have been booked so early. But certainly it became a much more recognisable home performance. Uh, you know, once, you know, once that second half kicked off and Jao was in the play. Absolutely. And, and it was nice to see Hutch back for a bit, wasn't it? It was lovely. I, I thought he was having a, a lovely game. I mean, the splitting up, obviously, we saw it in the Leeds game and, and, and against Preston. The, the way that he just breaks that play up in the middle when they're attacking was fantastic. It's just that they were attacking a lot because midfield was a bit iffy, wasn't it? We didn't really have much um through it in the first half. But then the second half came and that was just lovely, wasn't it? I just, I, don't, I think, I think when you, when you, when you, you see at home, you shouldn't be playing one striker up. Front. I get one striker up front away from home, but at home you should be those two strikers up front, and that really turned the game. That just, you know, within well, within minutes, didn't it? In the first, in the first half. Sorry, it's in the second half. You say that, but I, I think we've kind of had two games in a row now, um, and we'll obviously we'll come on to the Sunderland game a little bit later, where. We've we've almost just kind of sat back a little and weathered the storm. Now, granted, against Sunderland, it was it was with two strikers on the pitch, um, but we've we, we've kind of just sort of seen out the first half of, of two games before we then 
ramp it up a level and it's 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 really worked for us now i don't know if i'm not saying it was necessarily deliberately like that on friday against preston there, there'd be no logic to do it when you've just had you know two weeks off with an international um an international break um but it does make me wonder whether or not yoss has, has just had to think about things and thought maybe actually you know ha having a, a fairly quieter first half Maybe just giving the opposition opposition a chance to think. All right, okay, they're there for the taking, so that they go in and they do their team talk, and then we go in and say, right, okay, time to put the action plan into place, and this is when we go for it, and we hit them, and we hit them hard, because it's it, it, it's kind of worked for the last two games. If that's been what the intention has been, which is is, is why I kind of said maybe actually, you know, Yoss is some kind of tactical genius, and he's just not had enough kind of personnel at his disposal to, to be able to cope with those kind of um those kind of plans maybe it's just coincidence it's just felt like two games have followed a similarish pattern now you look at the goals that we conceded though and i think every wednesday fan will look at them and go yeah they're typical wednesday goals to concede yeah yeah because i because i don't think we have that discipline at the back to prevent those goals going in so actually it might be the perfect tactical plan where where yos just goes Oh, you know what? What we're going to do is shrink this game down to a 45-minute game, and then that's less time for for our defence to get caught uh, with a player in behind them, or get caught falling asleep, or get caught out of position. Uh, you know, because the goals we do concede are super typical Wednesday goals. We don't get we don't get out muscled. You know, you don't see you don't see us conceding goals the likes. Uh, you know, when knew you scored against Leeds. When was the last time you saw Tom Leeds or Venancio get absolutely muscled off the ball and a player go past them? It literally is lapses in concentration. You know, where, mm. where you know, one of our players seemingly sees a relative in the crowd and just thinks, "I'm going to look at him for a bit," and then there's a player immediately behind him who just lashes the ball past Wildsmith. Um, so yeah, I I absolutely. Uh, if, if Yoss has seen that, then he has seen something. He's, he's addressed a weakness in our team in a way that Carlos Cavalier would never have done. Bugger all that. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the goals. I'm, say, I'm chopping at the bit. For goodness sake. I was just going to say, I was gonna say how, how are we going to do this? Because we've got, we've got, altogether, we've got seven goals to talk about. And all of them are worthy of 10 minutes discussion on their own, really. Um so, I mean, we're already 10 minutes into the podcast. How are we going to do it? One sentence challenge. You got it. We, every one of our goals, we, we are limited to one sentence. Wow. Okay, okay. So there's four of us, right? Four goals for the pressing. So, news first goal. Let's go, Eddie. Great first touch, classy finish. Fair enough. Um, then the Zhao goal. Mr. Davis, fantastic cross from Bannon and great neck muscles for a looping header. Great, I love his neck muscles. That's, <laughs> that's what I love. About. I do enjoy a nice pair of neck muscles. <laughs> <laughs> James, it'll be the Saviour's second goal. You can have the privilege of. Do you know what, Lord H? I mean, I, I've known you for a few years now. I don't feel like I can take this one off you, right? And and I also. And I don't, I mean, it's up to Rich and, uh, and, and Eddie whether or not they agree with this. I feel like we shouldn't limit you to one sentence. I think you should no, have, I think, should. I I think, think you should. should have 60 seconds, right, to, 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 to describe it, to talk about it, say whatever you want. You know, you can touch yourself in any places that you want to do while you're doing it. But then when your 60 seconds is up, then that's it. Is Just that before fair? you do I it. Need, I don't need the 60 seconds. All it Just was... Sorry, Before you start, can I go to the toilet then? Just to, just to <laughs> sort of have to hear it again. <laughs> it was quite simply, pass one, pass two, pass three, pass four, shoot, spaff everywhere. Spaff. It was Thunder chotter. Do you know what? It was superb. Beautiful. It was superb. And um, I if, I, if I had to sum it up in, in a sentence, I wouldn't even need it. I can sum it up in a word. Uh, and it was the word that I think I repeated several times after that ball hit the back of the net. And that was just, wow. Just, you know, it, the last player on the pitch you'd expect to do it. Uh, the last point in the game that you'd expect someone to take that kind of risk and do that sort of thing. Just everything about it was just, wow. Awesome. Keep it in the fucking corner of the goal corner. screen. No, yeah. just that. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He what he did? wanted he wanted to keep it in the corner and then accidentally went past two players <laughs> before it then became a thing. As he was stumbling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Amazing. 
And of course, the fourth goal, James, please. Um, welcome back. That's the, the only words that I can use to um, to describe it. Can you just imagine that any other time, right? Fernando Forestieri is out for pretty much that it was August, wasn't he? The last time that he played for us, so he's pretty much been out all season, give or take. Uh, and he, he 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 comes back, and let's be fair, he actually he had a really good period of play while he was on the pitch. You know, I thought he had some really good touches. He looked really hungry. He scores a fantastic goal, and yet no one's been talking about him. <laughs> it's, it's almost like that's secondary. Um, and he's, I mean, he's not even guaranteed a name on the team sheet, is he, at the moment? Because the way that that Zhao and Nui have been um, have been playing so he's probably he's spent this last kind of you know, six months or whatever sat there thinking they're all waiting for me to come back just wait till i get back on that pitch and then he comes <laughs> back he does that and still it's like no nah, no nah, you're all right fessy you just sit on the bench so he kissed your... the badge though he kissed he the badge, the badge. And did a dance. Look, I, look, I, I know i know when you kiss the badge it's rubbish and modern players do it and then they get transferred the next week or whatever but he's been out for so long and everything's been bad. And then he came back and he kissed the badge and he looked happy. And he, when he looked at Atty, he looked oh. at him like he loved him, like the big brother he is. Oh, and it, it's just everything is right in the world again, isn't it? And we're all vain enough to take that for this this week. <laughs> Next week might be different. 100%. <laughs> Tell you what, though, did, did you... Um, you know, there's been this kind of chatter with, with some of the interviews that the players have had and stuff about how... The team spirit is quite strong at the moment, and I think that there was very clear suggestions that the back end of the Carlos era, in fact, maybe actually pretty much since the the summer, that things have been a bit down, and the team spirit's not been good, and there's been quite a bit of infighting and stuff like that. Do you get the the feeling at the moment that there is a bit of a positive feel about the place, and that the players are genuinely seem to be playing for each other now? My favourite bit is that uh, is that uh, Daniel Pudil is now fully four or five seconds behind everybody else in the team to join in the goal celebrations. Because he's always, we're scoring goals and he's so far behind the play that he like <laughs> randomly turns up about 10 seconds after when everyone's there. Yeah, he, the, the fact is that we are, we're celebrating as a unit again. It's not individual players. Yeah, um, I know it's that. And uh, th those recriminate, it's not, even, it's not even the celebrations, it's the lack of recriminations now. You know, when we score, the, the towards the end of Carlos's time, or let's just be honest here, this season, um, it's not been great. When we've conceded, the body language hasn't been great, yeah. and there's been a, there's been a lot of anger there. There's been a lot of recrimination, and and that seems to have gone as well. I, you know, I don't know whether whether we've got the team spirit back like we had, but we've talked about leadership. We we're getting our leaders back, aren't we? You know, knew he was always there, but now he's getting a chance and he's scoring amazing. Amazing goals regularly. Um, Barry Bannon's back. Sam Hutchison's back. Tom Lees is back. It feels like it's kind of orders reasserting itself. All you need to look at is the, the players' Instagrams and, and the videos are putting out. Um, it's brilliant to see. I, I don't know if you guys saw it. Probably not. If you've unfollowed the <laughs> Chuffing Podcast Twitter account, you bunch of numpties. Um, but the, uh, there was um, Zhao and Pelopesi on the coach singing and uh, Bannon and, and, and Ati on the coach singing. And uh, and it's just it just feels lovely again, doesn't it? Just I, think, feels... I, think, I think what Eddie says is right. He's like, you see them celebrating and apart from Wildsmith, who's kind of 100 yards down the other end of the pitch, all ten the rest of the players plus the subs as well are piling onto it. So that that's that for me is a really good kind of sign. And we've had these players out injured for ages, and and pretty much what we said was that as soon as some of these players come back, it might change a bit because the players that that have been playing have not been good enough. That's without a doubt. But the ones that were in, out injured, quite clearly good enough. And and now it's proven it. Our Bannon's back now. Uh, Forest is back. We, we're seeing these kind of the, the, the results starting to change a little bit. So just quickly, just to finish off the uh, the Preston match, then um, just one word: um, your favourite goal of that game. So, Eddie, <laughs> that's not even a question. That the, 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 so what's your favourite goal? It's a non-question. Because yeah. you're going to. We're all going to get the same answer, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. obviously. Not but the re the reason. Well, so, okay. That question. I will, I will, but I'm not going to do it in one word. I, and you, you're not even my real dad. You can't tell me what to do. You <laughs> so, <laughs> so, right. I, well, I'll, I'll make one observation very quickly. 
<laughs> New Year's goal. New Year's goal felt to me like um, the goal that uh, my, uh, the end Antonio scored against who? Right. Wickham. Wickham. No, not against Wickham. Before Wickham. that, against Carlisle. Carlisle. Right. Carlisle. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Injury time. Mikel Antonio curled that one in. Uh, you know, against Carlisle, and it was like it was like every, all of the the pain was washed away. It was a goal that wiped the slate clean, and that's what that New Year goal felt. Rich, what do you want me to say apart from New Year? I mean, what? I'm asking what? a question. What? What? So what's with your what's hostility with this goal? evening from you? Because, good, because, it's a load of, because you want this one to spaff all over the place no, about the, you, the if man you, you are obsessed with. Just answer the damn question. You bang the table then. New Year. Thank you. <laughs> James? Uh, it's hard to say anything other than um, New Year's second. However, I think we do. it does deserve an honourable mention for, for many things to do with the Zhao goal. Um, that lovely kind of, you know, triangular passage of play between whoever it was, Bannon, Fox, a couple of other players. Really beautiful what? little bit of play. And then the, uh, the Bannon... Um, ball into the middle and also the fact that that in terms of actually heading get, getting the, the ball into the back of the net using your head that far out when the ball is looping in from that angle is a really hard thing to do and it sort of reminded me a little bit of the uh, who was it Robin Van Persie goal in the yeah, the, World Cup. the World Cup of the Euros and it, you know it, it, that was a level above um, but technique wise it's really hard to do that that wasn't really one word, was it? But um, yeah, you know, I, I think uh, honourable mention for Zhao. On another day, we would have spent the last 20 minutes talking about that goal. Yeah. Well, I'm going to disagree with you because I think the Zhao goal was the better goal of the day. Oh, well, I just really you just, stole your thunder just, there, didn't I? <laughs> you've just spent, you've spent the last 48 hours just spamming <laughs> the internet with asking new videos of that goal. And then you absolutely bait and switch us with this. That was the better technical goal. As you say, the cross from uh, the, the ball from Bannon was perfect. The header from Zhao was incredible, and it was a far harder, far harder technique than New Who's goal. <laughs> right then, uh Jap. So let's uh, crack on to the, the Sunderland match. Now we were a little bit more upbeat originally about playing Sunderland weren't we um, obviously they've, they've been awful and I think we could see why couldn't we I was um, I mean before the game and during the game both I was cursing Eddie uh, because what, what 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 was your line in the last podcast Eddie that the most Sheffield Wednesday thing possible would be for us to spash Preston and then go to yeah. Sunderland and, and, and lose <laughs> and there were various points during the first half uh, where I think me and my mate John just looked at each other and just went, we're, we're going to lose this game. We are going to lose this game. And it, it wasn't that Sunderland were particularly anything. It just felt like they were, we were just giving them a lot of chances, particularly in the first half. We were just letting them do a lot of stuff. Um, thankfully for us, they are absolutely fucking shite. I mean, they are <laughs> dreadful, aren't they? <laughs> They've just got nothing. I mean, they've gone to Derby and won 4-1 on Friday. And they played with a team with no confidence, with no ideas, with, you know, just very little in midfield, um, very little in attack, and actually very little in defence. Just a really, really poor team. Um, and it, it was kind of the same thing again, wasn't it? Where first half, we just kind of let them come at us a little bit without really doing very much. Uh, and second half, when we thought, all right, let's step it up a level and, and, and just pick them off. Um, God, they're such such a bad team, such a bad team, and I really feel for them because they're a good club, Sunderland. It's a it's a it's a really nice setup there. I think the fans are really nice. I had a really good day out there. I thought the you know the the police were really helpful. We got lost a couple of times trying to find the metro afterwards, and the fans couldn't have been more helpful after they basically got relegated on 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 Monday. Um, and just really nice, and I really feel for them. But you know they're just so poor, so poor. It, it, it is disappointing, I think, that clubs like that that are kind of that you think that look from the outside look like good clubs, well run. Um, maybe not so much that now, but 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 clubs that you kind of if if you're going to pick the clubs you want in the top league, 
they would be among that because of the support they've yeah. got, the infrastructure, everything they've got about it. They're a good club and not like a uh, a franchise FC or anything like that. Do you know what I mean? Um, so to see him kind of just about to go to League One is quite, quite disappointed, really. But I think before the match, I was looking at it and thinking, right, they just tonked Derby 4 1. You, you could just see it all day long. This is Wednesday, exactly like Eddie said. Yeah, we'll, sm- we'll smash Preston, but we're going to just fuck up. We just don't like. But so to. To get to 1-1, and obviously I wasn't there, but so I can't comment to watch the game, but to see it get to 1-1, you're thinking, oh my God, here we go, here we go. But yeah, I was pleasantly surprised in the end. And it, it, it should have just, been, and... it should have been, here we go, because they they should, in their position in the league, when they, they concede, they concede and then equalise within basically, what, less than two minutes. That yeah. should have been the point where they go, right, guys, seriously, get your shit together. We're in a relegation battle. We can go on and win this game. And for them to concede the goal that Tom Lee's scored, uh, which was, of all the goals that we've scored, we, uh, the seven that we've scored over the Easter weekend, that was the least impressive, wasn't it? You know, it was it was just a free kick into the box and just really bad defending. And, and, and Tom Lee's basically just connected with the ball and it was going to go in the back of the net. Um, so they've only got themselves to, to, to blame for that. The fact that they get it back to one all. Uh, and yet there was a bit of luck involved and I'm sure we'll talk about you know some of the, the, the controversy of uh, of that second half but you can't concede goals like that and then you know feel sorry for yourselves when you lose the game can you I think we know from you know from the the disappointment of this season let you know call it what it is disappointment of this season that even when Wednesday have been down at home uh, the the when we've got that goal that, you know, that kind of motivates you, even if it is just it's getting back to 1-1 or it's getting, you know, from 2-0 from down back to 2-1, the crowd really genuinely give the team a lift. You know, they, they, uh, a lot of the time I think we feel that we're really cynical as fans um, and the Wednesday, the Wednesday fans are really demanding and, you know, they, they accept nothing less than, you know, the John Sheridan and Chris Waddle level play. Uh but you really saw the difference that when suddenly got back into that game, completely out of the blue. I mean, it wouldn't have happened if they hadn't had that injury after we'd scored and we were just caught completely cold at it. You know, again, a typical Wednesday goal to concede. But although the Sunderland home fans kind of went up and they, they started singing, it didn't really have that gravity that's really going to motivate the team to then go to the next level. And we actually responded. We were the stronger to respond to that. Um, and so it wasn't a surprise when, you know, when we got a goal, I think as James says, that it, I, I would be so disappointed if I'd conceded that goal because, it, you know, it wasn't as if it was a really well-worked, uh, you know, clever, you know, Tom Lee's you know, was, was left free because other players ran across their markers and drew them. It was just really bad defending. Nobody taking responsibility for it. Um, and I think if you if you watch the YouTube highlights, uh, Rob Statton is giving it all, oh, you know, a header, powerful header from Tom Lee's. And, you know, he got in front of his mark. No, it wasn't. It was literally landed on, on his instep and he couldn't do anything else other than put it in. So uh, I think we got a bit of a let off to get back ahead. But I think we deserved it by that point. We were we were dominant and they didn't make it an intimidating atmosphere when they got back into the game. And I think that paved the way for us to then just go on and run away with it. Absolutely. Fantastic. Uh, I mean, the, the game itself, obviously the first half was absolutely horrendous, wasn't it? It was just dire football the conditions football. didn't help let's be honest the conditions were pretty grim yeah. it was cold and wet and windy it was can, it was can, just horrendous. Can, we, can we just dwell on that for a minute because uh, uh, i think it was i think it was quarter to eight in the morning that me and john set off we had to walk into town because um <laughs> couldn't, couldn't get a taxi no buses because the amount of was that snow even forecast? Like when we got up, we were like, yes, it what, was. "What the hell yeah, has happened?" It was going to happen, yeah, yeah. It's, it I, I think it, I think it, it forecast early in the week, and then it, it changed to kind of rain, and then it was just going to be sleet. But it was it was proper proper snow. Um, but it was only in Sheffield. Like as soon as the train, even when the train got to Doncaster, there didn't seem to be any snow there. And then certainly uh, in the northeast, just absolutely nothing. But I've never known a place rain as much. It rained from the minute we got there to the minute that we left. It just rained all day. 
Oh, absolutely. We had a horrendous day. I, I would like to uh, just uh, a little shout out to um, uh, the Dutch Owls Twitter feed who kept me entertained that, that first half. I was uh, translating their tweets really badly. Um, so that was fun. And Twitter wasn't working properly. So I was putting out these hilarious quips and nobody was responding at all. Obviously hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but it turns out Twitter wasn't working, so that's what I'm blaming on. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, the game itself, obviously, <laughs> way it went. And eventually, we we uh, came secure, shall we say. Because I must admit, I was still nervy at, at, at one apiece. I, well, you guys yeah, 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 I was. I yeah, was... Even at 2-1. Even at 2-1. But luckily... Are we, 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 we going to talk about the incident that, you know, the, the game could have turned on? What when Fox went off? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's not yeah, that was the one. That's not the that was the game, game changer. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah. see what I mean. I'm sure we've all watched it back several times, and that's, I've got. I, I've had a couple of mates that disagree because I've said all the way along. I said, yeah, I said at the time that looked a Stonewall penalty. Watched it back on the TV several times. For me, I, you know, just absolute hundred percent penalty but i've had a couple Doesn't of minutes disagreed penalty. that say that he was already on already on his way down yeah. um so um it'd be interesting to see what you think because if he gives the penalty he's got to give bannon a yellow which means he's going off because he's already on he's a going yellow. off exactly so two two and we're down to 10 men that's that 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 really is the point where whereby their tails are going to be up isn't it oh i thought I, it was look. dive no oh, was dive. <laughs> there's yeah. no way it's it a dive bad. If you look he's, how he's, he goes down, he's, he's, he's halfway down before Bannon actually touches him, and then he sort of flops himself. I mean, I didn't actually think that there was any controversy over that until I watched it back on the telly, and um, Mr. Morrison, uh, good old Clint, uh, came on and said it's, it's a definite penalty, and I was screaming at the telly saying, what on earth are you talking about, you stupid man? I, I think we uh, You some... know, when you, when you watch Channel 5, because, you know, us in the Channel 5 circles, we don't take much notice of Clint Morrison. <laughs> You know, he's kind of like, you know, he's, the, he's sort of the injured. Clint. No one really takes Clint him seriously. Now, is he? Is that a Clinton? Yeah, yeah. Go Clint. <laughs> oh, it's just Clint to you, is he? Oh, you, you, yeah, yeah, good yeah. mates now. Best mates now. Channel <laughs> 5 buddies. <laughs> I think well, regardless... I, I, I think I'm regardless surprised whether, that he didn't get booked for that. Regardless whether it was or it wasn't, <laughs> I think, I think wow. we've kind of... We turned the corner with a look like that. You know, all, true, all yeah. season long, that's kind of stuff been going against us. To actually get a decision like that in our favour, makes a bloody change. Yeah, I, I, I won't disagree with it. I, I, it I, from I, at the time watching it, I thought I, I, mean, I, I spoke to all the lads around me and I said that's a bloody let off because it looked like a lunge. Um, but from that distance, from the away end, you think yeah, you know what the refs obviously seen something that we haven't. Fine, we'll take it, no problem. Happy days. When you see it, I mean, it looks it looks terrible. I honestly think it's a it's a really bad decision from either the referee or the linesman to not give it because yeah. I, I borrow a, a phrase from American sports when they talk about a player making a football move, i.e., he, he's not going to ground; he's going to, um, to to lunge past the player to try and avoid the challenge that's coming in, and Bannon just clears him out. So yeah, what a massive let off, but. I think on the balance of play, it would have it, it wouldn't have been justified because I think we I think, again second half we were vastly better than them and it goes from the, you know like I said about their their crowd um, I don't think I don't think their coaching squad their coaching team believe in those players I don't think the players believe in themselves they were just waiting for the axe to fall and uh, you know it, it was up to us to do it so yeah I've got no no sympathy for them. Um, and even even their fans didn't really go up and like they, it wasn't booing afterwards for Bannon. It wasn't like they were like we've been robbed here. Uh, I just think when you look at it back, it was a terrible, terrible decision. I I, I appreciate your opinion, but you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you're celebrating a birthday, a wedding, or anniversary. Maybe you've passed your driving test or you've landed a new job. 
Well, whatever your reason for a party, the Riverside Cafe is the perfect location on Catch Bar Lane overlooking Hillsborough Stadium. To inquire about hiring us for your function, call 07989 856 054 or Odable 14 232 6121. Um, right, then, ladies and gentlemen, let's crack on, shall we, with uh, with this week's Wednesday news. Um, first things first, um, we have got uh, an injury update. James, uh, we've got another one on the injury list and a few that uh, aren't yeah. coming back. We've got, uh, so we've got some bad news. So um, Sam Hutchinson is now out for the season. Um, I, I mean, it's probably not a great surprise, but... Um, nope. And Gary Hooper confirmed out for the season. But some good news on the uh, injury <laughs> front, uh, which is that Morgan Fox is also out hey! for the season. So. There we go. Oh, that's not nice. Wishing uh, pain and suffering on somebody, James. That, that's no, awesome. listen, I'm not, I'm not wishing you... pain and suffering on him. Just <laughs> you know, any, much, anything to get him off the football much, pitch. How much pain and suffering has Morgan Fox put on us for the last few months? <laughs> So, He's actually on. last couple of well last couple of games, didn't really, but certainly against Preston, against Preston he wasn't bad yeah. actually. He seemed yeah, one, once, right, yeah. he, he seems to be one of those that maybe when he's actually got some confidence, um, he might he might be all right. But um, it's one of the, you know. one of the things I wanted to to talk about was we've got we're getting the quote unquote first team players back, you know, our better players. How much they are making players who we've probably been a bit harsh on this season, look a hell of a lot better. You know, Joey Pelupesi against Sunderland looked like a legitimate baller. I thought he was close to man of the match territory uh, on Monday. I don't know whether you agree. But has, has, he, has he come through that, that period yeah. of where he's kind of been new to the club and he's now starting to yeah. settle down a little bit? Is that is that part of it? Uh, and like I say, getting better players back around him so the pressure's not all on him. Exactly. I, exactly. I don't know, but can you judge it against Sunderland? Because no, well, exactly. as, as no, I think, that's, I think that's we've established, not... I mean, they are really, really poor. And, yeah, and this, this is I, why I've I, not I, been doing Joey yeah. Pelipesi videos all day <laughs> uh, on, on our socials. Um, but, hey, I tell you what, I give it give it one more game. If he can, continues to do that, I'll be there. I'll be finding uh, you know, every kind of... of, of Pelu Pessy rhyming slang uh, to get into uh, get into video stuff. <laughs> what does rhyme with Pelu Pessy? Lionel Messi. Lionel Messi rhymes with Pelu Pessy. There we go. <laughs> uh, and uh, well, of course, with it being so close to the end of the season, any injury now is going to be essentially people out for the rest of the season isn't it it's it really is as simple as I always that. found it weird that that thing he's out for the season well he's out for about six games or whatever it is left now it, it just seems weird when they said the end of this they're out for oh, the season well, and even tell, one game to the tell goal, me what's out for factually the season. incorrect about that statement there's nothing it just sounds weird that's all i'm saying no it does <laughs> i mean it's, it's six games isn't it it's like yeah it's, it's, it's yeah. about five weeks or um it's a month or, out or whatever yeah, 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 it's, yeah it's a month out and and it's not i mean uh, hooper is no surprise i don't think we expected to see hooper again before the end of the season anyway so that's no surprise um hutch the only surprise actually is that it's a different injury with um with with Hutch, which i don't think we saw coming i think that we all just assumed it would just be a recurrence of um of his old uh knees or or, or lack thereof um and fox look it looked fairly innocuous the the the, the fox thing didn't didn't really notice what happened um often when players go off in what seems to be quite innocuous circumstances it does seem to kind of end up being something that that's going to take a little while to um to, to to sort out i think the good thing is now i mean two things Firstly, and I'm sure this is something we're going to talk about in a little bit more depth, but you look at the league table and you sort of think it's it's difficult to see a scenario now where we're going to get dragged into it. So, you know, losing another player or two for for what remains of the season isn't the um, isn't the end of the world. And we've also now got this kind of scenario starting to come round with regards to Adam Reach now and 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 exactly you know where he he's been playing a much more central position because we've bloody well needed him to but now we've got a few more players coming back we've got a few more options you start looking towards that left wing back role and thinking well that that's what we signed him as we signed him as a left-sided player as a, as a winger effectively who played probably more at, at left back than he's played at, at left wing for us um certainly in that first season so surely that position should really be um should really be his so whether it gives us an opportunity for a few games for the back end of the season to 
to see whether or not you know Reach can work in that in that position again now. Um, that might be quite interesting to see. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I believe we've got a few uh, updates on the youth as well, haven't we? No, well, we've got one. Um, we've got, and you, got and an also, update I, on I, the I can't, I can't, You've got to do it with the proper intro. Oh, yeah, we had a, we had a jingle, you, didn't we? Gonna, um, yeah. We had a jingle, and we'll, we'll say, um, James talks about kids. I forgot what the original one was, and that, that would just was, have a definitely wasn't. sounds wrong completely. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. just like I don't think there was a jingle. We were just sort of like youth update, youth. youth. Yep, youth and yeah. stuff. Anyway, you, you, you crack on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I was surprised if anyone knows that this exists, but uh, in football they have an apprentice of the season um, sort of thing. So the EFL have a short list of three uh, players who are like, you know, apprentices at their club. I assume they get more than the normal apprenticeship wage, which is about a pound a day. So They um, have to be I'm... professionals, if I understand <laughs> it correctly. So they have to right. have signed a professional contract as opposed to just be academy scholars. Right, fair enough. Anyway, so um, of the uh, three that have been nominated for apprentice of the season, Alex Hunt, who plays for us, is one of them now you may remember alex hunt for winning uh a, 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 the um like academy goal of the month competition a couple of months back uh for for his you know absolute worldly strike so he's not had a bad season alex hunt and i'm guessing the fact that he's you know he's, he's nominated for apprentice of the season means that he's probably about 14 so you know it, it all looks pretty yeah, rosy uh, looking at the pictures of him he does look about 14 as well there we go actually 17 oh is he it's, it's still, yeah, he's not had a bad season for a 17 year old and um you know i think that that uh, some very good indications there about what this uh what this kid might be capable of and that's all i've got for the youth update i'm afraid he, he's, he's not i mean he's in, he's in quite an illustrious company isn't he? he's got yeah so, that's what i thought against Fulham's ryan sessignon and Reading's Danny Loder. So against Sessignon, that's not a bad one to be. He's probably not going to win it based on he's that. He's been a first teamer for yeah. a, for over yeah, a exactly. year. Yeah. Yeah. Both, both yes. of those have played extensively for for their clubs. So it's well, in in a sense, it's like he's just turning up for um, you know for the free beer, not for the free beer because he's only seventeen. <laughs> uh, turn up for the free diet coke and uh, what J two O's and fruit shoots. Um, but yeah, he's probably not going to win it. But hey, how amazing is that then? For a, a lad who's had zero first team experience to be rubbing shoulders with, uh, you know, players who have been, you know, key, you know, key, key contributors to uh, <laughs> a team at the top of the league and a team that are even worse than us. But even so. And, and I guess because he's, un, he's under 18, they've got to kick him out about nine o'clock as well. That's, you can't stop beyond that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, want, I really want to know how this works. So it's apprentice of the season. So Ryan Sessignor is um, an apprentice because if it's anything like, so the apprentices that we have at our place, once every probably three weeks, um, this, you know, slightly overweight woman from Doncaster College comes and they have to do like some number sums. Uh, and work out like what the circumference of the circle is. <laughs> Numbers. All, all, no, yeah, yeah. All these kind of like you know key skills things as part of their apprenticeship, and then they have to do like you know a hundred words on um, what your favourite show on the TV last week was, and that kind of stuff. Like you know, do they have to do that kind of stuff? Is it is it like in a proper apprenticeship like that? Do they have to do like a day in college every month? Yeah, I think I, I think you have to be yeah still be in the academy system. Yeah. You know, uh, Complete uh, uh, full disclosure here. Um, so one of uh, one of Alex Hunt's main rivals in local games has been um, a, a young lad called Alfie McCowan, who plays the same position for the Leeds Academy, and he's in exactly the same situation as Alex Hunt. So he signed a pro contract for Leeds, um, but he still has to do, you know, the kind of. Uh, two hours a day of English and maths and all that kind of stuff. You know, they they have that, that duty of care in the academy, um, and yet he is earning um, more money than, than probably any of us for this podcast. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, even the even the big books that Lord Hillsborough pays us for this podcast. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I think you still have to be part of the system. You can't you right. can't be Billy Big Bollocks around this. Um, I'd just be amazed if Ryan Sessignon is still just rocking up. 
uh, you go, oh, yeah, and scored at the weekend. Yeah, no, no, you you need to uh, calculate the circumference of a circle with three <laughs> centimetre radius. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to read. You've got to read of mice and men for um, for your essay for uh, at the end of this week. If their footballing career does go askew, then they might have to enter the job market and and number sums is a wonderful skill to have, isn't it? So, <laughs> fair play to those chaps. Um, well, a little bit of Wednesday news, oh, of course, the saviour of Sheffield Wednesday, Atty New who has won the, the Player of the Month award. I assume everybody on the podcast voted for Atty. I, I, I'm, I, missed, I missed the vote, um, so I didn't vote for anybody. We didn't need you anyway. Uh, James? <laughs> Thank you. I've got to say, I didn't vote either. If, if I had a vote... Did you either? I, I would have voted. I would have voted for. Uh, Atty, yeah, I, I would have voted um, for because he did deserve fair. it. He did deserve it. And I think what did he get? Eighty-five percent of the vote, something like that, which was more than I think I joked last week that it'll be like seventy odd percent. Um, and the player in second will have got eight percent, but it was even even higher than that. But I mean, you can't argue with it. I mean, the guy's on absolute fire. Well done to him, and richly deserved. Um, I um, also uh, I also upvoted a video on Pornhub entitled. Uh, Kosovan fucks four guys from Preston. <laughs> so I think that probably counted towards it. Yeah. I, I uh, don't know what that website is. I don't understand the joke, I'm afraid. Uh, Eddie, um, you've lost me with that one. Uh, <laughs> I was also loving the random picture of, of Atty being presented with this this picture on the website. Yeah. With the, the guy How that, awkward does he look? hell is that? <laughs> with his Lacoste hat on. <laughs> so have we figured out yet who that guy is? Not at all. No, it doesn't even say not even on the website. I mean, my best guess would be that it's whoever is at his like player sponsor yeah, I for think this it season. Must be. But you know when yeah, they when they do when they announce the teams before the game and it shows a picture of them on the big screen, uh, and afterwards it has whoever they're sponsored by. And and I think probably out of the the squad of 18 16 of them are available to sponsor because <laughs> yeah. it costs that much now it is like basically you have to take out a mortgage to sponsor one of our players so i think i think lucas Zhao is sponsored by the blunkett family uh, and there's one other player that's sponsored in pretty much the entire it, like it opening was, squad i can't imagine that Atty knew I, said, Bar I think barry bannon that's about it i believe it? it was a, the dinner tonight for the sponsors so the wow two tables set one for the players yeah. one for the sponsors <laughs> it's, true. it's it's taking place in my front room right now the sponsors are all crammed in there yeah. so i i i'm sure he looks he looks like a guy who is uh big into the world of football he knows about wednesday uh he, he listens to the wednesday week podcast he knows what he's talking about <laughs> if, if you're listening uh and you are at new year's official sponsor and also sponsored by lacoste Get in touch <laughs> at TWWcast on Twitter. I think you're being very disrespectful to the chap. I, I, I should imagine that he was picked out of thousands of people who queued outside Hillsborough um, to, to to meet Atty and, and, and shake the saviour's hand. So, uh, well done, that man. Well done. Um, of course, I had a bit of Adam Reach news as well. Yeah, so he's now in the final five for the EFL... Uh, goal of the season and anyone that watched the good friday um show on channel five will have will have seen them all um and yeah so they started off with a short list of 10 and then you could vote for the one you thought was best narrows it down to a short list of five which reaches in i mean obviously it's been a public vote thing so we obviously get through to the final five there's some bloody cracking goals in the um in the really top is. 10 so he has done really 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 well um and the exciting thing is that now because i think the winner is decided by a panel and it's announced at the efl awards which i assume means that um adam reach will get like an invite to go so he'll have to like buy a suit and stuff like that now but um you know free dinner and all that <laughs> <laughs> uh, do uh, you chaps have any other wednesday news for this week a uh, uh, couple of things that I was going to mention. Um, well, three things, actually, that I was going to mention. Firstly, obviously, we've had the uh, the figures come out this week about the amount that each club has spent on agents' fees in the last year. And I think we came in at something like 1.6, 1.7 million, which yeah. is barely even in the top half, to be fair, in terms of what some clubs have, um, some clubs have spent. I think Villa was five and a half five million and a half pounds. Million, wasn't it? Yeah. 
just yeah. on um, agents' fees. Um, now, I'm glad this has come up towards the end of the podcast because I can't go on a half-hour rant about agents and how much I hate them and how much they are oh. ruining the game and how they epitomise everything that is wrong in uh, British football right now. But maybe I've said enough just in that little bit. Um, so, yeah, that's there. Um, this is a slight aside here, but anything when I get on to kind of talking about Wednesday and financial matters and stuff, I want to mention Peter Lerman, who is you know a friend of the podcast. He was on it a few weeks back. He's been involved in the finance. Well, he's led the financial fair play specials that we've done, and he's in Sheffield this weekend. So um, he's going to be at the game on Saturday. So I'm hopefully going to call him before the game in the Riverside Cafe to do a quick kind of periscope before the game with and hopefully have a bit of a chat about what he thinks about agents' fees and, and stuff like that because he's a, a good guy to talk to about um, financial stuff when it comes to uh, football. What else was I going to mention? All the shirts are half price. I don't like any of them, so I'm not going to buy them. But, um, you know, it's nice for the club to actually do this considering last season, I think we got we made it to past Christmas before last season's shirts got reduced. So, you know, that's something. And what was the other thing that I was going to say is um no it's gone but it'll come back to me in a bit <laughs> was it gin was it gin night at the hillsborough tap um don't don't make that sorry this, that not this the is the tap. that lord h made when we were sat in there recording a podcast and he kept calling it by the wrong name <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry i've drunk a lot of gin <laughs> Well, I, I didn't realise that, that Peter was coming over. Uh, that's, that's rather exciting, that James. Um, he's, he's, I mean, he, he certainly knows his number some, doesn't he, Peter? So I, I shall be looking forward to that uh, that periscope. That'd be marvellous. Um, right then, chaps. I, so, oops, I've got I've got a couple of things. Uh, uh, just just couple. Firstly, just want to say Fred Spikesley for no <laughs> other reason than just to wind Vic up. Um, <laughs> And I think we should do a separate podcast on, on it completely. To be honest, uh, 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 if you Cam would like to have a little look at that, do go and, and look that up. Um, it's the, it's, there's a, a chat. I'm sure everybody's seen it, but we've retweeted it from uh, the TW Ducast um, various times. Um, and they're now trying to raise money for a documentary on uh, on Fred Spikesley as well. So uh, do have a little nose into that as well. Uh, Vic is supporting this movement. Yeah, she's obviously lost the, uh, lost the ability to go and block something or, you know, stop following it. <laughs> Or don't look, something like that. Well, and, uh, and... You guys could take some of your own advice there and uh, and do that with the the wonderful um, social media content that we've been placing out from our joint um, podcast accounts. So uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fantastic. Uh, right, so chaps, let's uh, crack on with the the wonderful previews now. Uh, next game up, uh, of course, is Fulham, and this one is going to be a very difficult one because these chaps do have something to fight about. Obviously, um, Eddie mentioned earlier teams that are maybe a bit on the beach uh, obviously Preston were sort of still pushing for playoffs etc etc but Fulham are really in the thick of it now aren't they it's, it, it is one of those um, yeah I mean it, you look at it and just think it's it's quite hard to see us get anything out of this one they are um, one of yeah I mean there aren't many good teams in the league this year you've got probably Villa you've got Fulham you've got it uh, you've got um, Ipswich uh, you've got Cardiff and you've got you've got Wolves. Uh, I mean, Ipswich are great, aren't they? Ipswich are really good. Um, no, but you've got pretty much that top four uh, are actually the only teams that have got any sort of consistency about them or anything like that. Um, and yeah, I'm not. I, I can't say I'm particularly looking forward to this. The good thing is that it it almost doesn't really matter anymore. I think the fact that we've got those two win, uh, those three wins over. Um, the last three games, those nine points that have just made such a massive difference means that we don't particularly need to panic about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that yeah, they'll 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 come here really wanting to yeah, they want to, they'll they want to prove a point. What they want to do is over. I've got a feeling we're going to approach this in a quite a relaxed manner. I think with the, the players who you expect to be able to perform, there's no real pressure on them. Uh, so yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all. I, we, you know, we could obviously get beaten quite handily. They're a very, very good team. It wouldn't surprise me if we pulled out a, you know, a performance that that was reminiscent of um, you know last season, the season before, where you know a kind of a big game. Uh, you know, you imagine we're both fighting for for prominence at the top of the division. Um, yeah, I 
I honestly think that we've got a really good chance. I'm, I'm not scared of Fulham. I think they're, they're a very good team. But I, I think that we are a different proposition than we were even maybe a month ago. Oh, absolutely. And as you say, there's, there's very little pressure on, on us as a club now. And, and obviously, Fulham, I should imagine, will probably be feeling it as well. So, yeah, lovely, lovely news. And then after that, uh, a club in a very sort of similar situation to us is, uh, is QPR, who had a cracking result against Norwich, didn't they? I missed that. Did they did they beat Norwich? They stuffed them 4-1. Oh, really? Absolutely. It's a good scoreline, that 4-1. There's been a lot of good 4-1 um, <laughs> results of late, hasn't there? Um, yeah, I don't, QPR are a weird club because I, I don't know what it is about them that I just don't like. I don't know if it's that they have real aspirations to be like one of the top London clubs. Like whether they, Do they just think they're better than they actually are? Or is it um, the amount of money they've thrown at their project, project and, and, and just pissed up the wall? Um, on the other hand, though, I do quite like Ian Holloway. Um, and I think a lot of Wednesday fans have, have got a fair bit of time for him because he seems to actually be one of the few football analysts that is quite complimentary about us um, and doesn't just dismiss us in a, in a heartbeat. So ex-football analyst is, is probably the correct terminology we, now. We met, we met him after the playoff final. Um, yeah, he did, didn't you? Outside Wembley. And yeah, he was, came up, had a real nice, we had a real good chat with him. David Greer brought him up, had a real good chat with him and he just was really honest about how, how he thought what, what let us down. Um, proper nice bloke. Really had time for us, which was, which was nice. Absolutely. Having said all that, I I, re I I really hope that we go there and win. I really do. And would would you? I, I think did we, nice there, we won there last season, didn't we? We've got a decent record there of late. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, right then, chaps. So that's going to bring us to uh, an end of this week's proceedings. Before we go, do you chaps have any little bits for tonight? Yeah, just one thing that I was going to mention, which is just following on from last week's uh, podcast, uh, which obviously, you know, we did something a little bit different last week, uh, which was um, obviously with me chatting with uh, Barry. What I wanted to say was just, I mean, we did get quite a fair bit of feedback from from that, from kind of different sides of the equation, really. I just want to say thank you to everyone that took the time to to get in touch, whether they were positive or negative comments. And, and to be fair, I think there was a good mix of, of both people that, that, that listened to it and enjoyed it, people that listened to it and didn't enjoy it, people that just decided that it, it wasn't going to be for, for them. I, I was involved in some really interesting discussions on um, on, on Twitter last week, um, and some you know very mature, very grown up, very some some very adult um, conversations that, that that kind of came off the back of um, of that. And um, yeah, I just want to say thank you to everyone that that actually took the time to to get in touch um, and and let me know what they think because there were some um, some really interesting comments off the back of that. Absolutely. Well said, Jay. Well said indeed. Um, anybody else in a little bit for this evening? Yeah, I just want to quick mention something that's um, not necessarily Wednesday link, but obviously today on Wednesday, um, uh, Ray Wilkins obviously uh, passed away, which was uh, it was really sad. Um, I, I think uh, we, we've had a little troll through earlier and found a goal that he scored against, against Wednesday at Loftus Road for QPR, which was a bit of a... Uh, a, a nice little chip over Chris Woods back in '91, but um, just what a football's good guys and and a, a probably a footballer or a football man you could probably deserves a title legend, which is often used too much these days. But I think Ray Wilkins is the kind of guy that uh, probably deserved it. And uh, one of my memories when was playing for England back in uh, which World Cup was he when he got sent off? 80, Brian Robson. Eighty-six was it? Eighty-six, where yeah, Brian Robson yeah. did his shoulder and then. Uh, Wilkins yeah. got sent off when England had a nightmare start to the, <laughs> he threw, the World threw Cup. He threw the ball at the, uh, the ref, didn't he? He did, didn't he? did, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. He <laughs> did. So, uh, wow. But, you know, one of football's good guys and, uh, you know, only 61, which is, is, is really, really sad, to be fair. I think it's one of those, he's one of those uh, players or football personalities that, um, so I, I know, you know, you and me, Richard, the, the elder statesman around yeah. here, but, uh, uh, I, you know, I, I remember him as a player. Um, I think that, that you, even um, listeners who 
are younger than us um, will remember him. He was always on Football Italia in the 90s, Gazetta Football Italia, and, you know, helping out James Richardson um, in that. And then later on, you know, as a coach with Chelsea, um, he's been around the game for a long, long time. I, I think if you didn't see him play, he was a fantastic player. He, he was um, the consummate midfielder he was box to box he was everything you'd want in a player uh, it, it's really sad that he's gone at such an early age um I, I, although it's not directly connected to our club i think uh, i think the football world is poor if we're not having ray wilkins in it so uh, yeah commiserations and all our all our thoughts with his family there was, there was one tweet i saw in particular today that really summed it up i think and it was from jack Jack really shit Villa and I think Ray Wilkins was there as uh, a coach or assistant manager or something like that at one point and he, he basically said even when Ray left Villa he was always ringing me offering advice and telling me what I could, what I could do to improve a true gentleman and the most nicest guys I've ever met which just you know um, probably sums him up you know for a young kid playing playing for, for a football club that really really that he helped even when he wasn't at that football club proper slaphead though yeah <laughs> <laughs> he was. <laughs> I, I do. Um, I do remember that. Um, it, I think it was my f my 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 first or second full season following Wednesday, where he did score that 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 beautiful um, chip over um, over Chris Woods, I, and, and remarkably, even then, you know, he did. He looked like he was in his forties back then he, he, was, he just had that that sort of look about him didn't he i don't know how he managed to um to do it but it was it was a, a just a beautiful beautiful goal absolutely i would like to say uh, uh thank you as well to to steve um at uh steel 1867 uh for for sending us that goal as well so thanks for that steve um right then ladies and gentlemen that's going to bring us to an end of uh, this week's show uh, mr davies if people would like to find you over there on the twitterage where can we do that oh, boy. you can find me at dicky owl on twitter uh instagram wherever else you find i'm that dicky owl <laughs> and uh eddie or bean where can we find you so I am, as always, on uh, Twitter, Insta, all that kind of stuff, at Sausage Arms. And for a limited time only, starting this Saturday, I will be in Dubai, where I'll be spending the week, <laughs> and therefore not Dubai. on next week's podcast. <laughs> hey. oh, you're not that trick. The streak ends with two. There we go. <laughs> this, is, this is like Sam Hutchinson, isn't it? Back for two games, out for the rest of the season. <laughs> Misses the next six games. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to think of myself more like Morgan Fox. A bit rubbish <laughs> and out. And everyone's like, OK, thank God. For you. Um, James, oh boy, where can people find you over there on the social medias? Uh, well, on Twitter, at James Mario. I don't really use Instagram, so I wouldn't bother trying to look me up for um, for that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, and I've not asked him about it, but I'm assuming that he'll be cool about doing this. So, um, yeah, we'll be meeting um, Peter on Saturday. So hopefully we'll do... Um, um, a, a Periscope or a Twitter Live, I think it's called now, uh, video from the uh, from the pub before the game. So uh, yeah, drop me a follow at James Marriott, and then I'm off to Peddler Night Market after that. So I might even Periscope from that when I'm absolutely hammered, and that'll be very amusing for everyone. <laughs> absolutely. Um, of course, if you'd like to get on me over there on the Twitter, you can that Lord H. That's L zero R D underscore H. Get on the podcast at T W W Cast. Uh, we have been trying to um, do more uh, on on the social media. As you, you might have seen our, our... <laughs> no shit. <laughs> <laughs> do more, but not necessarily more variety. Yes, yes. Let's have a little bit of variety. Yes. You might have noticed if you are a Facebook user that our Facebook presence has increased slightly uh we've even put stuff out there on instagram as well so if you are followers of those sorts of things or if you uh, are finding us for the first time because somebody's been doing a wonderful job over the last week over there on our facebook page uh by all means thank you for coming and uh, please do stick with us uh remember eddie's going away so he won't be here next week it's fine um of course you over there on the youtubes as well it has been a pleasure as always ladies and gentlemen thank you so so much for joining us be good be safe and we shall see you real soon
Saturday saw Ray Wilkins sign off the old year with one of the best goals of his professional career. Dennis Bailey's muscular running set up the chance. Wilkins showed supreme footballing vision to fight home a perfect lob. Bailey on the charge. There was a hes moment's hesitation from Woods. It's rolled back to Wilkins. Oh, that's a supreme finish from Ray Wilkins. Delightful goal. You pay good money to see goals like that. Look how far out he was. And he says football is as simple as that.